Welcome to the Success Inspired Podcast, business and personal development podcast to help you accomplish more in life and realize your true potential. And now here is your host, Viv Muller. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Success Inspired Podcast. Um, my name is Viv and today's guest is somebody that has developed this amazing platform called Go High Level that I've been using for the last couple of months and been following the journey and what everything they do and i'm just super amazed and i just could not be more excited so i had to invite him on the podcast to share their journey on how they you know how, how he started with this whole thing and, and what inspired him to 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 get it all off the ground and and you know and tell you guys all about the amazing stuff that they do at high level and the impact it makes and how it helps everybody uh, be more successful in the business because this is what the podcast is all about it helps you inspire success so please welcome sean clark from go high level Sean, great to have you on the show, mate. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So, really great to have you. Would you mind just to share us a bit of a backstory about yourself, sort of your, I guess, you know, just an introduction a little bit? Yeah, sure. Well, let's see. I don't know if it's hard. I'm trying to think how far back to go. So, you know, always been an entrepreneur. Kind of started my first, my first real business was probably uh, a really big answering service, which for some people who don't know what that is, that's just answering a lot of phone calls for small businesses. So grew that to about 400 employees and exited that business about 10 years ago, maybe. And then after that, started my first true SaaS business I was in the accounting software space and actually sold out after about, I don't know, three or four years and then started high level after that. So my, my career has been pretty shallow, but it's because I've done a couple of things for a very long time. So yeah, so I've been doing high level for about the last three and a half years now. Well, you know what they say, no, if you want to do something well, you have to focus on it. It's true. Well, so you've done well. I mean, I, I check your LinkedIn and I see that you actually you've done a couple of things in the tech world, a couple of different programs and softwares from even the invoicing bit. So yeah, well done. Well done. Nice. But let's talk about high level because sure. that, that's your latest baby. You've been running it for since, since when? Oh, uh, I think we're probably getting on f- four years now. Awesome. Four years. So I mean, in, in the years of a software, what is that? Is that? Uh... Yeah, it was like an ice age, I think. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So look, what inspired you to start with Go High Level? What was the yeah. sort of... <clears throat> so yeah, my last software company, I worked with lots of small businesses directly, about a thousand of them. And, you know, after I did what we did in the invoicing size, I always wanted to do more. And so I would ask, you know, I always talk to my customers like I do now and say, hey, you know, what, what else can we do? How else can I help you? What would you love to, you know, what do you need more in your life? And they sort of all said the same thing. They said, oh, well, we need more customers. And so, you know, I'm a software engineer. And so I thought, well, what if I could write some software for that, right? And so I got together with my co-founder and we, we started in kind of version one of High Level and we started selling it to the existing businesses I knew. And, you know, honestly, at first it was a really big success and we were super excited. But then very shortly, people started canceling the software. And, you know, I would pull them up and I would say, I don't, I don't get it. I showed you a demo two weeks ago. You loved it. Like what's going on, right? <clears throat> and their commentary was, you know, we love the software. It's amazing, but we don't have time to figure out how to use it, how to op- you know, make it operational, all that stuff. And so, you know, it was really kind of a crossroads moment. And, you know, we could have gone either way, but I think what was really amazing about that moment is we got a phone call from a, a marketing agency. And that marketing agency had a co-customer of ours in common. And we and he said, hey, could you, you know, get on the phone, show us what we're do- you're doing for my customer. And I remember at the time, like, they get, gosh, why am I even talking to this guy? <clears throat> you know, he's not my customer. Why would I bother to take time out? But it was, I, I, luckily, I, you know, sometimes I do things, even if I think they're not worth doing, just to see what happens. And in this case, it was an amazing moment because I got on the phone with this guy and I found out, you know, not only is he serving my customer, he's also serving like 80 other businesses. He sees the platform, he loves it. He understands the value proposition. And most importantly, he has the time and expertise to implement it. And so he literally goes off and implements it. So we sold it to him that day for his 80 customers. He really goes off and shows us a bunch of other agencies. And it really changes the way we do the business. All of a sudden, it just clicks. And it's like, wait a second, this is what we've been missing, right? The, the, we're the software guys. We know how to write software. We love some great features. But if you really want to help the small business owner, we've got to help the agency because that's the missing link here. Those are the, the people behind the scenes that we didn't even know existed, really driving a lot of that success. So that's really what kind of spur us towards the direction we are today. That's really interesting because I thought, you know, like typically, you know, when you start a business, you kind of have a plan and you already have a, you know, your target, your 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 target audience, who you want to serve kind of defined, and then you kind of design everything around it. But you kind of went the other way. You kind of just 
Well, I mean, actually, to be honest, that's exactly what happened. We did have a plan. It's just our plan wasn't going to work out. Like, you know, I mean, well, you know, who knows now? But, you know, at the at the time, it was pretty scary because it was like, uh oh, wait a second. You know, we're really good at software. We really feel strongly about that. But like, if people don't get how to use it, and it, at the time, it was super simple, too. It was just like two-way text messaging and reputation management. We're like, I don't get it. How much easier can this get? You know, and it's, a, and it's sort of one of those things where it's like, how are we going to solve this problem? But we had this plan. It was it was like, we're going to sell to small businesses. We're going to sell this. We're going to do it that way. We even looked down the world and we're like, hey, there's a bunch of other people doing something similar. Like, how can we lose, right? And so it's where that whole plan that sounds great on paper meets with reality and just blows up before your eyes. And you've got to decide like, okay, what am I going to do here? Am I going to pivot? Am I going to give up? Like, how are we going to get ourselves out of this situation? So I think that was what was really amazing about that moment. Absolutely. Well, you certainly pivoted well, and yeah. you've got an amazing Worked platform. Out. Yeah, incredible. And so for, for, for those that uh, are listening and, and may not know too much about high level, yeah. do you mind just sharing a little bit about a bit of a speed? Yeah, a pitch? absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of like an all-in-one marketing platform and sales platform. It's got everything from CRM systems, so funnel building, website building. But at its core, it's really focused on really converting leads to customers. That's kind of what we specialize in because every business it, and it is automated as a way as possible because what we've noticed is that most businesses can find a way to bring some leads in somehow but it's the it's the lead to con customer process where they always kind of fall apart and a lot of times it's not because they can't do it it's because they lack for time so we bring automation into into that into that gap and help automatically move that lead into that stage where that small business owner can turn them into a customer and most of the time that's a booked appointment I was going to say, yeah. So like, would there be any other like really good use case examples, practical examples? Well, you know, driving people into a physical location for sure. So retail uh, scenarios were great. Dr driving people onto, uh, into an e-commerce situation. So an online purchase is also um, very good. But, you know, oftentimes if you think about outside of a physical purchase environment or a virtual purchase environment, it's almost always either an introductory kind of funnel offer, which is why we have the funnel builder, or I would say for most professional services, it's an appointment, right? So if you're going to, you know, going to go get an attorney or you're going to get an accountant or you're going to get a plumber, so one way or another is an appointment there. Either you're coming to me, I'm coming to you, or we're going to meet in the middle. And so for us, it's really a focal around the idea of if there's not a purchase involved, it's how do I get you booked on a calendar? And we have all the calendar and scheduling in the system for that reason. And that's really where a lot of the automation shines. That's amazing. And you're totally right, because when it comes to sales, there's there's nothing better than get in front of, you know, face to face. So so booking an appointment over a Zoom or in person, that's great. You could even like have an example for uh, a dentist, right? If they've got a, a white uh, teeth, in the, uh, teeth, white uh, teeth. Te yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's trust it. me. I know. I know I want to. <laughs> I love the dentist example. Yeah, and that's exactly right. So, you know, a lot of times people are running at, hey, free teeth whitening or discount or whatever it is, right? And then they're, they're like, they think, oh, well, that's it, right? I'm just going to capture the person and they're going to magically show up to the dentist's office. But the reality, that's not how it works. So, uh, you know, once the lead comes in, you need to get to them within the first five minutes. You need to try to get them to book. If they don't book, which they often don't because people are busy, they're running around, they're doing their thing. You need to follow up and follow up and follow up and follow up until they convert. Well, no one wants to hear that, but it, it is the reality. And the, the, But if you automate that process, you truly can sort of magically take people from, call it the internet, random ads, all the way into somebody walking into the physical door of that dentist's office, all without having a human being touch them. But with them feeling really great about the process because they feel like, okay, I, I did fill out your ad. I don't know who you are. I am kind of interested in this idea. And you're bringing them along, educating them and getting them to actually book. And they're reminding them that they did and then getting them to show up. That's just killer. And what I like about it is, is you know, I mean, I've done a lot of sales. I come from a fitness background, so from the fitness industry. Oh, okay. yeah. um, so I managed a bunch of gyms and did lots of stuff in the fitness industry. And, you know, some of those tasks obviously involves, you know, getting on the phone and, and, yeah. and selling to people and trying to get them convinced. Sales and is big, yeah. Sales is big, right? So you might you might do a paid ad to drive them in, but then you still have to convert and do all the phone calls. And we would yeah. do lots of phone calls, I mean, lots of SMS. And obviously that comes down to a skill set. Yep. That's that's a really hard to teach, right? Oh, and take yeah, take very, take very take, so. take, take sound, right? Your tonality, like all the different things that you say. But at the end of the day, you're still kind of being the one that kind of has to reach out to them, like continually, like because people sometimes it takes takes time for them to to make a decision to actually do something to exercise, right? Nobody's super motivated about going oh, out right. and exercising, right? So so it's a hard uh, hard one, right? So what I like about this approach is you actually spin it the other way around. Instead of trying to call everybody all the time you do these automation sort of a responders where you just keep on giving them value and slowly nudge them, nudge them, nudge them into booking a call. 
And because that happens, then you know that they are actually ready. So that's no, yeah, cha- that's no right. chasing. So for business that's owners, right. that's amazing. Yeah, that's absolutely. Just- there, there's not a single business out there, I would say, that we can't actually put more sales in the door, even with their existing leads. So forget, you know, you know oh, buying more, buying more leads or buying you know, ads at all. We can absolutely help anybody because what we find 99.9% of the time is like, even in your fitness situation, like even in organizations, this is what I think is amazing. Even in organizations with really crack sales teams that are dedicated to the process and have nothing, do nothing else. Fundamentally, computers will beat salespeople because if I'm a great salesperson, I'm probably already on the phone. I'm probably already talking to an appointment. I'm probably already doing something, but guess what? New leads are coming in. And so how do you, you know, if you're the owner of that business, what are you going to say? Are you going to say, oh, get off the phone with that hot prospect and get on that new lead that doesn't even know he exists. No one's going to say that. But if you don't get to that lead, that lead just immediately starts to die. And so if you use the automation, even with a a dedicated sales team, which by the way, almost no organization has, you're still freeing up the resource that's critical to the close, which is that person who has the tonality, the expertise, knows the pitch, all of that. And you're waiting to bring them in until that person is ready, that's phenomenal, right? You save a ton. And then wind back to the rest of, you know, the 90% or the 98% of people who have no sales team. And you're just talking about literally putting something in place they don't have today. It's pretty amazing. The results are just through the roof. Yeah. I mean, one of the features that I've never seen and I've tried everything under the sun, you know, I've, I've built my own business and you always, you know, like you just keep changing the heads, right? The marketing, the delivery, the service, everything, right? You just like you solopreneur, you're there on your own. And, <laughs> totally. and, it, and you try and like be as efficient as you can because you've got a limited amount of time. So you Absolutely. end up trying to figure out all these different systems. And, you know, I started 2010 when I started my fitness business and, um, and I had to learn the websites and the marketing and emails and like start, starting to patch things up, you know, MailChimp and then WordPress and like, you just end up with all these different gazillion of different <laughs> like pieces a of software. Mess. It's a spaghetti mess. And then you've got either, you know, like if you're good enough, you might figure out how to sort of zap it all together, but then things break and it's just pain in the ass. So this is like, this is incredible. What you, what you guys done, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, well, we got it from people like you though, right? So this is how we got into the business. Like we started with the lead response and helping to convert more leads. And then as we work with people like you, we saw this whole spaghetti mess and we're like, well, what if we do this? And then what if we do this? And, what if we, and then the cool thing is not only are we able to pull all those things together, but also when you do pull them together, they all share the same data and they know where each other has been. You can just do incredible things you otherwise couldn't do, right? So you can, you can send someone out a booking link and you know that they haven't booked. So if they haven't booked, then you can say, hey, I noticed you haven't booked. Do you have any questions I can answer? So you can create these really authentic sequences that really respond to the user behavior and then you get just tre- what it means is you just get tremendously better results right so instead of spitting out the same message all, all the time you can actually really sculpt that out and so people are really always amazed and and a lot of it's text message driven it feels very personal people love it it, it gets great response really good conversion rates well from scalability one of the features that i haven't seen before and and i'm super super you know excited to to use more and more is the phone system you actually have yeah. a fully direct like directly connected phone system so guys for, for what it means is this software like you're right, just you 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 fire it up on your browser and you press a button and you ring up people through a phone that's associated with your software and you could do it from anywhere around the world. So what that means is it's fully scalable. So if you've got people in Philippines, they can log in. When you're sleeping, they use that same phone number to ring up people. But not only that, what I've really liked, and I mean, I sound like I'm pitching this thing like a bit of a sales pro, but I mean, I'm just super excited about it. It's bloody awesome because, you know, what it does is, let's say you've got a paid ad on, on Facebook and you've got your headset on and your funnel is, as soon as the lead comes in, you want to call them straight away. Well, this software, you can actually program it. So as soon as the lead comes in, you don't have to touch a thing. You just got a headset on. You might even get one of those, he- he- you know, those hands-free ones. And the software will actually dial those new leads. As soon as they come in, it'll dial, dial their number. And so you get connected like that. You talk to them. You finish the phone call. Boom, next one comes in. Comes in it dials in again for you. And it, it's a log, it logs the actual, you know, the history, the conversation, uh, not the conversation. Uh, I mean, you, actually, you can too if you do the recording, right? There is an ability to record that's it as right, well. Yeah. So it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. It's just, you know, we know that if, you're, if you could just keep people moving, if you can keep the process going, that's how you win in almost every scenario, right? Because, you know, think about at somehow, some way out in the world, someone's learning about you and, and they're just sort of showing interest. 
And I think almost any business can get some amount of interest, right? I mean, everybody's going to be a little different, but it's almost impossible not to get some amount of interest. It's, it's what you do from that moment that matters. And if you look at the behavior of the average person, they'll just get, they sort of think like, oh, I'll get, you know, when you're thinking about setting it up, you're like, oh, I'll get back to them immediately, which you never do. You're just sort of lying to yourself. And then even if, and, and even if you're trying, like sometimes you're going to be asleep or sometimes you're going to be out doing this or you're going to be out doing that. Who knows, right? You're going to be otherwise indisposed. So you need a system that can automate that process. And the great news is that it's not that hard. It's not like you have to automate it so it's super rich and in depth. You really have to just reach out to that person and say, listen, hey, it's me. I can see you're, you're interested. I can see that you, you know, you want more information. You want to take this forward. Great. In order to do that, I need you to do X. And most of the time that's to book an appointment. And if you can do a little conversating, like, is now a good time to get you booked? And then that person gets that text and they write back, yeah, sure, that'd be great. And then the system can say, okay, I know that that's positive because we use machine learning and AI. Then you can shoot back, great, here's a link to my calendar. Grab a time that works for you. And then bingo, you just put somebody on your calendar without actually ever being in that conversation. Mm. And you can be off doing other things and not have to worry about it. I mean, worst case scenario, it just makes you way more scalable. Most likely scenario, it gets you a booking you would never have gotten on your own because you just honestly weren't, we couldn't be fast enough or just weren't available at the time. You're just doing something more important. Absolutely. And the other one, you know, with these, all these different skill sets that we need to have as business owners, you might not enjoy all of them, right? You might be really no. good at some of them. That's right. You might, you might not be good or naturally sort of inclined to do the sales. So you're always going to put it, put it put it as the next thing as the next thing and instead you're going to yeah, do something right. that right so so just hire somebody right absolutely absolutely and you know this is the fun part about it right you can you can create a system that's multi-user you can bring other people in from the outside oh, yeah. also just in our community right so we've got almost i think it's i haven't even lo i've lost count i think it's at twenty thousand people now in our facebook group you you have all those different skill sets so that that's the other nice thing is there's people in our facebook group that's all they do is sales they don't even know how to they don't know how to work it some don't know how to make a funnel but they, they they're a beast on the phone and they can sell almost anything right so i think it's also fun to just be part of the community because if you have a resource that you're looking for you, you can find somebody who probably not only already has that skill set a lot of times you can find a skill set in a, in a niche because like you said about fitness sales is totally different than insurance sales or than any other type of sales right you have to you have to be in a certain mindset you have to be used to selling to a certain type of person it's a different pitch right and so ultimately, I think finding people in those niches is also super helpful and important. Absolutely. Now talk about this business. Let's talk about this business model because you guys yeah. provide tremendous amount of value. I've not seen somebody that provides so much value for what you charge. The cost yeah. of the software versus the value that you provide. I mean, I don't want to name your competitors, but you know, there are software pieces that you sign up for and they might sort of reel you in on the free plan, but then you get... And, and there's so many of them, right? They limit you yeah. in terms of how big is your list? Or let's say if you go to an ML LMS, you want to launch an online course, they say, okay, well, how many students you can pay this much for this minute? And they just keep on capping you. And also it's the features, right? They kind of give you just a little bit of features and then you have to pay a lot more. And then you start scaling and say, oh, okay, well, now it's going to cost you, you know, $10,000 yeah. extra for this <laughs> thing. Gotcha. <laughs> they got you yeah and now yeah. you're so you're so everything you you've you, you've you've done is you're so intertwined in that software it's really hard to get out yeah so, that's the plan don't uh, so just so you know that's exactly how they intended to happen <laughs> yeah i mean i mean it's yeah. it's 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 not 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 that it's a bad strategy from the business perspective but for the business yeah, right. owner from a, from a business owner's perspective you're trying to budget you're trying to figure out how you know what how to grow and all these other things and all of a sudden you can end up paying a very big bill that you didn't anticipate. And sometimes, you know, some people want to do things like have a free course, for example, and maybe they're not making any money on their end and they're using it as a lead magnet for something else, right? But you might end up for that free course, you could very quickly find that it's popular and you're paying through the nose and you haven't gotten to the place where you're monetizing yet. And you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do, right? I can't afford a thousand dollars a month. And all of a sudden you're going to change, you're going to have to limit your potential just to pay it, you know, to try to get away from paying a big bill you can't afford. So yeah. We have flat rate pricing, so that's unlimited contacts, unlimited users, um, unlimited sub accounts, which is a big deal for us because we also are big believers in, you know, a lot of our customers, and this is a big part of our future is, you know, listen, it's, it's great that you provide a service oftentimes, but a lot of times there's a technology component to it. So think about if you're out there today providing a service, but you're also recommending another piece of software. A lot of people do this, right? And so what if instead of tomorrow, you just do the service, what if you could also sell the software and not sell someone else's software, but sell your own, right? So worldwide labeled, so you put your brand all over it. They have no idea it's us. 
And the idea here is really simple. We want to create a revenue stream around the software components as well as the service components because what we notice is that service oftentimes has a hard time staying in there because it's human powered, it's more expensive. And most of the time, the end customer just gets to a point where they're like, you know, you're a great person. I like you a lot, but a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month is just too much for us. So why don't we go ahead and pause that for now? And all of that just means, listen, you're fired. <laughs> and you know, they may not fire you because they think you're a bad person. They're just so busy and they think to themselves, gosh, that's so expensive. So we thought, listen, what if you could then sell them something else that's way lower priced, but because it doesn't require service, your time, right? It's not time for money. It's literally recurring software every month. So it's turning small business owners into de facto software companies. And it's been a phenomenal success. I covered this yesterday in on our level update, but we've seen a hundred million in revenue just on the software side alone. And that's our customers revenue. That's not a dollar to us. It's a hundred million dollars of cash into the pocket of our customers just selling software. It's a huge success. That's incredible. So we're talking about SaaS for, the, for those of you guys listening. So that means software as a service. That is a new, not really new, new. It's been around. The term's been around, but it's the term's not really been around forever, right? It is, but it, you know, the best best version of this today is people will say, "Hey, I recommend some software to all my customers, and I get a little kickback for that." That's the best I've heard. But we're not talking about that. We're like literally saying you are going to be front and center. And they will not know we exist. You're selling the software yourself, and you're adding all your stuff to it. This is the other cool thing about it, right? Because a lot of people are coaches or they have assets like websites or follow-up sequences or membership stuff or who the heck knows, and they pre-package it. So they're selling it out to their customer as this recurring software product every month. And because they're the expert at what they do, it's a lot of compelling value that the customer couldn't get anywhere else. Even if they did know we exist, they wouldn't be able to get it from us because we're not the experts in fitness or in law or in medical or whatever it is that they do. They're the experts. So it makes it very unique to them. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's such a no brand that, you know, anybody that's listening and understands a little about this sort of marketing and tech stuff must be just that the heads must be right now. It must be ex exploding. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we came from this world of people uh, like we call the, it's the marketing agency vertical, right? There's all these people saying like, Hey, do you want to start, you know, do you want to start a marketing agency? Do you want to get start a business? Do you want to, you know, do that thing? And if you look deep underneath the courses that are being sold, it's they're actually fairly complex. You know, even if you, let's say you can make it, make it a pitch and get the first customer. Most of the time it's like, okay, now you got to go into Facebook business manager and you got to create an ad and you got to do all this stuff. It's actually kind of hard. I would have a hard time with it. And what I like about how we're, we've structured it is way simpler. It's just, Hey, listen, take this thing. That's very much in a box. Choose the, the couple of tweaks you want to make very simple tweaks. And then you can literally just sell it. It's software, right? So it's not service. You don't have to do any work. It just literally compounds on top of each other. Every single month, you're getting this nice recurring revenue stream and it's growing over time. That's our vision. And it, honestly, it's, it's the vision of every software company that you've ever seen, right? That's what every software company does. That's why they make a lot of money. I always ask people like, how do you think these software companies raise so much venture capital? It's because they have a product that costs nothing to, to put another version out in the world, right? Yeah, maybe it costs money up front to sell it or to develop it. But once it's there, copy two, three, four, five, six, seven, the incremental cost, zero. Right? Zero, right? The only thing is the server space, but it's like, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's de minimis, right? So, you know, ultimately, this is why I think what our mission is, how do we take that same business model and give it back to the people and instead of just having it reserved for people who can go out and raise hundreds of millions of dollars in venture capital? That's really what, what differentiates us, I think. Absolutely. Now there's features like, you know, with your, I know that your membership portal on, on the online builder, you can actually yeah. upload videos. So that means you host videos as well. So that's quite a lot of stuff that you do for the, so I'm really curious. And you know, if, if you're willing to share, how do you, how do you manage to scale it when, when you say, you know, there's a, unlimited amount of lists, I mean, that's just context. I know that's just bytes. That's just text. Yeah. But, but when you start talking about view, that's, that's quite a big large file. So how do you? It can be. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, we try to be fair, right? So on our side, the storage of the videos is incredibly cheap because again, it's just bytes. You know, the bandwidth could be, could be pretty, could be pretty big, right? But ultimately we find that, you know, averaging it out across lots of people, it's honestly not, not a big deal, you know, more or less. And, you know, if, and even if, if we ever woke up, I always tell people, some people always ask me like, oh, well, I have a hundred thousand members and 10 billion videos and 
you know, 38 gigawatts of, you know, I'm like, listen, listen, listen. I'm like, like worst case scenario, like if you are some amazing power user, if you're Amazon in disguise and I just don't know it, I would just come to you and like take my bill from Google and be like, hey, can you pay this, right? The point is, is like, we wouldn't extract, and this is back to this whole pricing model concept. We're not here to extract more from you just because you do more. Like if you're, if you're an abusive, excessive, crazed user, I would just ask you to pay the cost on that. And I figure all behind all that usage, you're making a ton of money anyways. So, you know, worst case scenario, you're just paying the power bill essentially that I would otherwise be paying on your behalf. So, you know, again, we and, but it's funny because I've said that, oh gosh, at least a thousand times, never had to do it because I think most people are pretty reasonable at what they do. And they're able to generate a great deal of revenue off our current model. That's right. We're talking about extreme cases that like 0.1%. Yeah. Which, you know, we'll deal with that if it ever happens. <laughs> but but you, what you also said is based on like when you average it out, that's based on your knowledge on, on your current base, your database. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. But at the beginning, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't have that knowledge. So it's, is that a bit of a yeah, risk I mean, that you, you took? Just, or? You just kinda, you go, I mean, you know, entrepreneurship, right? You just kind of roll with it. You do, you do the best you can at the time and you figure, well, you know, let's, let's try to stay as true as we can to our model. And for us, it's been great because we've been able to do that successfully. And, you know, just from a scale perspective, you know, we're, we're, I, I put this out yesterday, but, you know, we're doing, we're working with 300,000 small businesses through 15,000 agencies. So we're an incredibly large platform. So this isn't like some bet we're taking at this point. I mean, we have some very big numbers and we understand Absolutely. exactly what our scale is and we've scaled incredibly big. So, you know, these days when someone says they're going to, you know, really upset the Apple cart, I mean, I, I try to, I try not to laugh at them, but in reality, you know, we, we, you know, come on down, we can take you. We're not, we're not worried about it. Now, Sean, I've got a couple of personal questions. You ready? Fire. I'll try my best. What's your definition of success? Happiness. Like, I mean, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to eat. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to live, a, I, I live, live the life I, I, I do now. I, you know, I don't drive a Ferrari or anything, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not hurting for, for food. And, and beyond that, I think it's just, you know, am I, am I, am I reasonably happy that to me, that's success. Love it. What's your ideal day? Oh gosh. My ideal day is probably one where I, we, we release a feature that really has an impact on someone's business. And I get one of those, I get, I get these now and again, where someone says, Hey, listen, you know, you changed my life. I used to have 10 employees now I'm 150. I couldn't do it without you. I mean, that that's the, and then, and then I get to go skiing in the afternoon, like, or at least on the weekend, I don't, sadly don't get to go skiing in the, during, during the week, but that's, that's my ideal day for sure. It's the feeling of satisfaction and being and knowing that you've made an impact on somebody else. That's the idea. Absolutely. I, I just think that's, if we can do that, how are we not winning? Right. And if we're doing that, how will we not win in the end? Like, and, you know, I think about it all the time in this, in terms of, you know, for some reason as a society or as a world, I think we're caught up in, in really big numbers. But, you know, I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett and I've, I've seen him in Omaha, Nebraska many years in a row. And, you know, he's, he, you know, while he may be a billionaire, he doesn't live like one. And, you know, he would always tell you, look, you don't need a billion dollars to be happy. And so I, I feel like if, if, if I could generate a billion dollars in total value for the world, but instead of keeping it all for myself, push as much of it out into the world as I can to other people, I would be tremendously happy with that result. You actually bring in a really interesting point because money isn't happiness, right? I mean, what do we really need to be happy? You just need to pay your rent, have some food in the fridge, just have those sort of essentials. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, when you're really busy and you're grinding, what's the number one thing you're thinking of? You're thinking of, fuck, I can't wait to have some free time and go for holidays or just do absolutely nothing. <laughs> and what is that costing you? That's costing you nothing, right? right? So there's really interesting studies or like emerging you know, information coming from you know top executives and CEOs about the unhappiness and dissatisfaction. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, it's absolutely. Incredible. Absolutely. I think it is. I think it's about finding. I think it's about finding balance, right? I mean, I, I think that you know, trying to have an impact is great. I, I mean, and we'll all have things we like, we really are excited about. We want our lives that are, that are fun, nice to have, not have to have. And I think we should, everybody should have a couple of those things. You know, I, I love buying new computers when, when they come out, I like buying new phones. I'm kind of a technology dude. So I want to live in a world where I can do that, but you know, I don't, I don't need, you know, private jets and any of that stuff. And, and, and in fact, that stuff would freak me out because I would feel like, oh my God, that's so expensive. So I just feel like, and, and I feel like for the people that have those things, I think on the outside, it looks phenomenal, but I think on the inside, it's a pressure cooker. And I think those people are, you know, living on a knife's edge all the time. And I don't know, that's just not my, that's not my deal.
That's right. You're talking about like those multi-million dollar fancy yachts that actually cost a shit ton of maintenance and it's a big liability, right? Absolutely. And you know, you know, it's again, back to Warren Buffett, you know, that he, he's only, he's owned at, at most two houses in his life and he only owned the second one because his wife really wanted it. He, he's lived in Omaha his whole life. He only drives one car and, and that's what he would tell you. You can drive one car at a time. You can live one house in one house at a time. It just doesn't make sense. And he can buy most people many times over. And so the fact that he doesn't have houses in Paris and France and all kinds of other crazy places and do all kinds of crazy things tells me that if he can do it, so can I. So I'll, I'll take it. And he still eats at McDonald's and he still likes milkshakes and cheeseburgers. And that's just the kind of guy I, I'd like to be. Absolutely. And look, at, for those of you guys listening, this is not to preach you, you know, like this is the right way and that's the wrong way. It's not at all. Like, you know, if, if you're a big fan of, you know, if, if you want a person being so successful that you can have a, your private jet and, and fancy, I mean, it's, it's oh pretty- no, and I'm I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Just for me, it's a, it's a new computer and a new phone every year or two. For other people, it can be whatever. But you know, again, you can have a couple of things you really like, and that's that's cool. Now, a quick question: Apple fan or a uh, PC? Oh, oh well, so definitely a, a Mac on the computer and Android on the phone. Okay, so have you seen the new? It's an odd pairing, but it's because on uh, uh, if for the for, for those computer geeks out there, they already know this answer, but. Max on Max on the on the desktop or Unix machines, but on the iPhone they are not. And so on 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 as a software engineer, Unix is a lot more fun to play play with and and write code on. So that's why I'm a Mac user. And then on the phone, you know, I like open systems. So Android is is like that. Yeah, excited about the new MacBook Pro that just came out. Already got it ordered. <laughs> <laughs> now. Um... What were some of the toughest experiences in 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 you know launching Go High Level that that you've had to, that really challenged you on a personal level? Oh, oh gosh, so many. I mean, you know, facing failure many times is probably the biggest thing. You know, realizing that the thing that I thought was going to work wasn't going to work, or and facing a lot of discouragement. I mean, the world the world is full of people who want you to lose, and trying to re- remember that you know a lot of people take pride in 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 and and joy in watching other people fail. Um, we don't oftentimes live in a really supportive world that way. And, and that's tough. And I also think that, you know, and I try to remind myself of this, you know, no one who has changed the world ever did anything that was normal or standard or accepted, right. Or encouraged often. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, in, in your own way, realize that as you go through life and you get a lot of pushback, some of that is just people saying, no, no, don't take a risk. No, no, don't, don't, don't quote unquote, you know, risk failure. Right. And so I think for me, that's been the biggest challenge is just you dealing with the mental game every day of having people tell you that, you know, something is, you know, that you're doing isn't good enough or it's going to be a failure and realizing you got you to push through it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because on the outside, it all looks very, you know, very cool. Like, look, you know, Sean looks successful, go high levels growing. <laughs> He must be, you know, he must be living, living a life, but I can, you know, I can say personally, you know, running a business, it definitely, it's a, it's a tough grind and there's a lot of emotion that, that, you know, creep up on you during the day, a self-doubt, all those things. Right. So it's absolutely, it's harder than it looks. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I think that's what, it, for me anyways, I mean, the, I, there are different, different personality types. My personality type, I really love it when people are excited by what we do, but I also really hate it when people don't like, don't like something or have a problem with something whatever it is, I take it really personally. And so for me, it's that, it's that mental struggle that, that really is the hardest. Cause you're very, you're very like connected with the software updates. I know that you, that's, I mean, in terms of feature releases. Oh yeah, way, absolutely. Big... I, I, I love it. I mean, I'm a software engineer. I mean, I love the power of software to change the world. And I have since I was a little kid and nothing has changed. I, I'm just that same kid, just a little bigger now. And you know, when somebody, when you go out and you try to do something to make the world a better place, and someone can't appreciate it or doesn't like it or, or worse, hates it and thinks it's garbage, you know, having somebody tell you that is painful because on the other side, you can, you know, you know how hard it was to get there. You know how much work you put into it. And in these days, I know how big of a team we have working like mad to get it done. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes to get that news, but, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has their struggles. But for me, that's definitely what it is. But, you know, in the, in the end, lucky for me, we have an incredibly supportive group of people that be that we work with and that we partner with as customers and it makes all the difference. It's really what gets me through every day. Which brings me to the next question, running a team of people. Now you said, yes. how many you got in place? 300? 
100. Oh, no, no. We have 150 team members. Thank oh. God we're not at 300. Yeah, we'll get to 300. I had 300 in my answering service, but and, and that was just agents. But yeah, here we have 150 team, team members worldwide. And running that many people, I mean, there's in, 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 in what it say in as the company is growing, there's different milestones at different revenue levels, right? And, yes. and I've heard this thing where, you know, when you get to like, you know, 10 million, I'm just pulling some numbers now, I can't remember exactly, but when you read a set, set milestone, when you got this much revenue and this many people to that work for you, it's got its own peculiar uh, challenges, right? From the leadership, oh, leadership oh and management. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Absolutely. It's yeah. And, and I would say I'm not really good at it. That's not my strength or my skill, but you know, I've, I've overcome it because I have incredible co-founders. So my co-founders have strengths that I don't have. And, and, and I will say it's, you know, it's, it sounds corny, but, and it's weird now because I would say I didn't, I didn't believe it at the time. And I think it's only through th this journey that I've come to understand this, but hiring the right people is incredibly critical. And, you know, and I can say that having hired terribly for, for a long time and also under investing in people will come to bite you in the end. So, you know, as a bootstrap company, you know, we tend to, we tend to do things when it hurts, you know, <laughs> we wait until the absolute last possible moment. And so oftentimes that's a big mistake, I would say, and, and it puts you in weird situations where, you know, you need something desperately, but you're so on the eight ball that you, you know, you, it turns out when it's all said and done, you could have been. 10 times farther down the road and you've just been a little bit smarter hiring ahead. And, and, and again, and when you do hire, you know, hire for the stage you're at, I would say. So don't, don't hire someone who's run a company 10 times as big as you are because they're going to expect things that are, they're not going to want to dig in. They're not going to want to get their hands dirty. They're going to expect a team of people, right? But, but don't also hire for where you're at today. Really, really hire for that next milestone that you're talking about, right? Find a person who has been who is at today, that next milestone you want to get to, because what they know is what it takes to get there, but they also remember still what it's like to be where you are. So that's what you need to always constantly be looking for. Who's that person who's probably going to cost me a little more than I want to spend, but fundamentally knows how to get me to where I am today, to where I want to go. Right. So can they kind of there with you in more of a beginning or, or before they actually really need it? So they actually can appreciate the, the struggle and, 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 yeah, yeah, the, and, the, and honestly, they're just smarter than you are about what it is you need. <laughs> you absolutely. know, you don't want people to show up and say, okay, now what? <laughs> yeah. You want someone to say, okay, cool. Let's get to work. I know how to do this. I've been here before. Yeah. I, I like to refer a lot to the book Emith by Michael Gerber, where he talks about, you know, three different types of, of, of people that you need in any business. It's you need technicians, you need managers, but you also need leader or leaders. And you can't be all three of them, right? Because we're all sort of inclined towards different, different perspectives. So would you say that you've got that covered? Oh, I mean, as, as, as best as, as, as we, as we do, I'm sure, I'm sure we're imperfect. That's for sure. But I certainly, I certainly think it's true that you definitely need different people with different skill sets. Absolutely. Yeah. Because one of the big misconceptions is that some might think that a, a, a leader is also a manager, but that's not really the same, same role, right? Being a leader. No, is something I, that... I mean, you know, no, no, I, I would agree. I mean, I think again, it evolves as you get bigger. It evolves as you get to different stages, right? But you also have to know your strengths. So I can imagine people who are CEOs of companies who are really good managers, um, mm -hmm. but really terrible leaders. You, it doesn't mean that the guy at the top or the gal at the top has to be one or the other. So I do think that that's important. You just have to, I think what's really important is you know what you're good at and you double down on it and you own it, but then you really know where that, where, where the, en the end of the line <laughs> is and you find somebody who, who's on that other side who you trust implicitly and, or, and, and, or, and put them in a position where they can take their strength and put it to use and not get in their way. Absolutely. Sean, when is the last time that you put yourself outside the comfort zone on purpose? Gosh, you know, we just, well, we went to traffic and conversion and I got, I got, I was lucky. I got chosen as a speaker and we got a, we had a booth there. I'm a terrible public speaker and, and we've never had a booth before. And it was a tremendously expensive investment for us. We flew a bunch of team members in. It was really freighting all over the place. <laughs> and so it, but it was, but so I would say that was, and that was sort of about a month or two ago. And so I would say that's probably the last time I did it, but it was, it was a phenomenal experience. It worked out better than I could have imagined. And there was also, uh, was it Snoop Dogg in there or somebody? Well, he was going to be, yes, yeah, Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart, but Snoop backed out at the last minute. Although, you know, that was part of the thing. I have no clue. I, I Snoop Dogg could have shown up and done a whole concert. I wouldn't have noticed. 
we were so busy, you know, at the booth that, you know, that's the other thing. When you go to the conference, you get to do all that stuff. But when you're, you're working the conference, yeah, no thanks. You, you, no, no time. I've been to many conferences and I, I can, yeah, I can always, you know, remember how, how busy those, those uh, big halls are full of people. I mean, even, yeah. I mean, it's COVID now, so I don't know, maybe it might be different, but yeah. Anyway, cool. And you've done uh, one really, really cool, uh, cool thing while you were there. You actually rewarded one of your, one of your amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. We had to give away our first electric car. It was awesome. Yeah. So we give it to a guy named Matt Decino. He's a super cool dude. So it was great to um, be able to do that. But yeah, so it was really neat to, you know, he came to us and he worked his tail off to help us generate a lot of inbound referrals for new agencies. And, And so we were able to give him that extra bump and give him a model Tesla Model X, which was really cool. And it was neat to see it. It looked really killer. And just be able to give him the keys and stuff and meet him and all that. It was just, you know, it was amazing. So when you talk about marketing this business, that's one thing I've noticed is it's you're heavily on word of mouth and affiliate. Do you yep. any actual do you actually invest any money in marketing? Do you need? I think we technically do run some Facebook ads and some Google ads, but they're very minimal. I'm mostly retargeting, I think. I don't know anything about it, really. I'm not a marketer, but but and and you know, affiliates is an interesting one because I would say the biggest thing to know about our affiliates is they are are not really traditional affiliates. None of them are these people who are like professional affiliates or what I don't even know how this works, but all of our affiliates are customers. All of our, you know, we really are just saying, hey, listen. If you're a customer, you love what we're doing, we want to do more of it, right? So for gosh sakes, please go tell people. And if you're willing to do that, here's something to incentivize you to do that. So really it is word of mouth. It's sort of incentivized word of mouth. That's how I think of it. Absolutely. One of the really amazing things about affiliate marketing is that you actually don't have to, you know, deliver any service or product or do just spread the word about something that you believe in. And for somebody that might be, for example, listening right now that is struggling for, for income and is looking at some alternatives, how to maybe free up the, you know, make their lifestyle a bit more, a bit more financially free. Affiliate is a great business model. Do yeah, they, but, do yeah. they, yeah. But do they need to be signed up as a customer with you or yeah. can they just become an affiliate? No, 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 no. Yeah. You just, I think it's, it's like affiliates.gohighlevel.com, I think it is. Or affiliate that go out level. Sorry, it's uh, it's uh, it's the singular, not the plural. But no, but yeah, absolutely. In fact, I mean, we write some incredibly large checks to people who are I don't believe our customers, but are just really or actually take that back. I think what we oftentimes people don't start as customers, and then they they bring a bunch of people in, and then they realize, uh oh, there's so many people coming. I need a system to manage this. So then they end up signing up just to manage the uh, flow of affiliate leads that they have coming in. But but ultimately, yeah, I mean, it's a great way to get started, like you said, because it's about exploring the products. We've got it's a good we'll do. Like I've even seen people get started with like a free trial, and then they just cancel before the billing hits in 14 days, just so they can they can get videos and do all that stuff. But anyways, it's amazing how easy it is to get started. And again, because this really works for anybody, I'm, I've seen such a diverse number of people recommend it around to almost any type of business. Yeah, it is. And, and your your reward structure is actually really uh, generous as well. <laughs> yeah, the 40%. Yeah, it's pretty unheard of. And, you know, 40% of even our base plan, $97 adds up real quick. But, you know, most people are 297 So, yeah, we write some very big checks to some people. But, you know, again, it, it allows us to do what we do well. Again, it's about knowing your strengths and weaknesses. Our strengths that are not marketing and sales. That's just not what we do. So we're, we're about creating new features and trying to get the product out there and make the product better. So Absolutely. we're able to focus on that. I must say after, especially after the up level, sorry, the, 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 the event that you run on Thursday. Update, yep. Level update. Yeah. I mean, there's so many cool things. I'm not going to go into it because we would be Don't full. worry, there's a video cool. on the YouTube channel. So that's really right. Fine. You want to hear yeah. me draw on for an hour about features, you, you can go there. Yeah, and I'll make sure I'll put all the all the show notes links and everything. But what I wanted to say is, oh shit, just lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I do that all the time. Trust me, I'm I'm with you. Uh, well, we launched a lot of good features. I'll tell you that. So I'm just excited because we're going to be able to really go into some bigger markets. Like our Shopify integration was awesome. Our WordPress was awesome. So I think there's some really good, you know, invoicing, social media posting. These are going to allow us to really expand the product and also get after a lot more markets that we are in today. Oh, I know what I was going to say is, you know, I think a competition, uh, competition is probably now burying their, their hand in the sand because how they can keep up with this? I mean, they, uh, they haven't already. So I don't suspect that they will in the future. And, you know, again, I, I, again, what's really key about our business model, though, that I think is really um, good to point out is we don't sell to everybody. Right. We sell to only a specific type of person. Mm. And I think that really is a game changer for us. And we really want to help people not just buy a product, but create 
a business, right? And I think there's a difference. Most, most of our competitors, you show up on their website, they're more than happy to talk about features. But if you say, well, yeah, but hold on, how do I make any money with this deal? They're like, well, I don't know. That's not what we do. Go, find, you know, go figure it out on your own. And I think for us, it's about like saying, hey, wait a second. Well, let us show you how you can use this. Maybe that's not how you use it. Maybe you're, you already have something that you're doing. That's awesome. But if you come here and you don't know, at least we have some guidance for you on how to get there. That's right. And you can either provide some, some guidance yourself or there's lots of people like, like, like us who can provide services from coaching See, high level. Thing to... That's great about it, right? It's, it's, it's the fact that there's all these smart people out there like you guys who, are, who already have this just out of the box, ready to go. And that way, and I think this is the problem. You know, most of the time you talk to people, you're like, well, what do you buy? Like, oh, insert a big product here that's expensive. And you're like, what do you do with it? And you're like, oh, I just sent out email newsletters or something, right? And you're like, what do you mean? The thing does a thousand other things. Like, yeah, I know, but I have no clue how to use it. And see, so that's why having somebody like you is so important in this journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've got a couple more questions for you and then we'll wrap it up. All right. You're, you're a busy guy and um, great. <laughs> enjoying it so far. Yeah, this is phenomenal. <laughs> awesome. So, Sean, this podcast is about inspiring success. And the reason that I decided is, like I said, I come from a fitness background, and so I've always enjoyed helping people um, be fitter, healthier. You know, my, I'm also I'm also cooked by trade, so I love cooking and nutrition. Oh, so, cool. You know, I, I believe that like an ideal life, an ideal lifestyle is where you're you're physically active, you're eating well, it keeps you energetic, keeps you happy. And then you also have the business side that keeps you, you know, it keeps you fulfilled. You're making impact. You're making, you know, making some great income. And so I feel like both need to be met in anybody, uh, in anybody's pursuit of, of a true happiness. So what do you do? Uh, what do you do to uh, keep yourself at your best? Oh, I'm terrible at it. I'm horribly imbalanced. I, I, I try to like walk every day. So that's my thing. Like first thing in the morning, I, 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 it takes me about an hour to get going. So I give myself an hour to wake, half an hour to wake up. And then I get myself out the door and I start well, at least getting a walk in. I try to do it a couple times a day, get some steps in. I find getting outside, breathing some fresh air, that kind of thing. That's as far as I've gotten so far. I do want to step up my game there though. And I, and I think in, in, the sh in short order, I'll, I will get there. But I also lucky, I mean, I've got things that drag me out of the house. I've got a, an amazing nine-year-old son who loves to play soccer and get outside. So he, He's always dragging me out. So it's, it's, I have some good external motivation there, but yeah. And then, and, and I love skiing. So it, lucky for me, I live in a relatively wintry place in, in, in the December timeframe. So we had an opportunity to get outside and do that on the weekend. So that's a lot of fun. No, that's excellent. And look, walking is actually a really good way to start for anybody listening. If you're stuck and you're looking to do something, you know, there's nothing worse than an idea of thinking I've got to go to a gym and lift weights because if you don't know how and if you've never done it and you're, you're at a level where you're absolutely absolute absolute uh couch potato then that's a lot of effort you've got to think okay hey, well i gotta figure out membership figure out the gym who's like what what are the exercises walking just put your shoes on tie your shoelaces put some music on and just like the only challenge you got is to put the shoelaces uh, put the that's right Put your shoes you on. You might even have the shoes on already. You know, you're going to have to do that anyway. So, and you know, honestly, I will tell you, I, I find it really helps quite a bit. I mean, I, I think it, it just gets the blood flowing. You get some fresh air. I mean, I feel way better. You know, give me 10 minutes to walk around, walk around the block a little bit. And I feel, I feel great. So I, I think it's super, super useful and super impactful. And, uh, you know, I actually, I used to go to the gym, but then COVID happened, right? So I kind of got off that. But yeah, I, I'm with you. And just anything that you can do, I think. Or, and then the, the other thing I love is a jump, but is jump roping. It's a, it sounds weird, but it's a really good way to get your heart rate up very quickly. And I find that it feels great after you after you do it and you can do it almost anywhere. So it's very simple. You don't need a lot of complex stuff. Well, it's interesting to say that both walking and, and jumping, there's two two activities. So walking is actually bilateral stimulation in a way. So I work with a client, she's a psychologist, and she talks about EMDR therapy, which is a sort of a bilateral stimulation through, you know, any means through a visual, you sort of following a, a, a light. And what it does is stimulates uh, your left and right portion of the brain. I'm, I'm not going to explain it too much because I, I probably would stuff it up. But, <laughs> but basically, the idea is that the bilateral stimulation helps it helps you 
in a way to kind of work out any 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 any, any issues that you have and get some sense of it. And so when you walk, so you actually because you know you walk, it's bilateral stimulation in a way too. So it's in a way, it's a it's a great form of meditation. And and you, and and you know we live so busy, like you might be looking on the screen all day, having all these meetings and yeah, right. all these different stresses. So yep. you just walk out, you got this bilateral stimulation. You yep. just yeah, it's great. I really like it. It's like it's like the old computers where you had to defragment the disk and just. That's right. It... That's right. That's right. I, I used to do that all the time. That's awesome. All That's what it is. That. Yeah, defragment the disk. In the hard drive. That's it, and then you bag. You <laughs> you got clarity again. <laughs> totally, I like that. And jumping. Look, there is some studies on that suggest that jumping. Actually, the act of jumping has some stimulus for happiness and also, well, just purely our uh, immune system, our lymphatic system. Did you know that lymphatic system actually, you know, I mean, we've got a muscular system, we've got a, a voluntary contraction. You can contract the muscles, right? That help you kind of with circulation and everything. Now, lymphatic system relies on muscles because muscles, when they contract, they actually stimulate the nodes of your lymph, your lymph nodes. Oh, I didn't know that. See? So, so, it's, so it helps circulation of the lymphatic system, which is really important. So when you jump or... Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's really cool. Yeah, see, I mean, I've never met anybody who's, you know, if I, I've never found, you know, it, people should exercise more. I've never found anyone who exercises who, you know, has a bad outcome, right? I mean, so, but at the same time, people oftentimes, I think, love these crazy complex, nonsensical, sort of too hard to, to achieve kind of outcomes. But so I figure, you know, the other thing is when you're 80, you can still walk. So I figure if I do that now, I can still keep doing that forever. So I'm, I'm happy to start that way. 100%. Look, <laughs> one of the biggest challenges people say, tell me, you know, is like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not motivated. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the motivation. I'm struggling to get motivated. And, you know, the motivation seems to be the big problem. Yeah. And, and they're waiting for it to come. And then they think when it comes, <laughs> when, it, when it comes, then, then they'll have it. And they'll be like all bouncy and happy. I well, I don't think that ever happens. It never happens. Well, it, 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 it's the problem of motivation is temporary and it's ba- very much based on your, uh, your emotional state. Right? That's true. Yeah. So if you're trying to start an exercise journey, an exercise routine, you can't wait for that emotional state because it's unreliable. You can't that's rely right. on it. Like you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. You gotta, you gotta make it artificial. Just you know, you build, I have to build it to my routine. That's the only way I can do it. That's the way. That's what I always say. Is don't worry about the motivation. Focus on a habit and pick one that's what's the what's the least least passive resistance. What's the easiest thing you can do? Like brushing your teeth. You know, what's the easiest thing? walking start walking because it's really least path of resistance and just make it a habit that you do it every day for 30 minutes and if you can do it for you know period of time there's actually study that's you know science behind it because when you actually say you do something and then you accomplish it it gives you a sense of confidence and accomplishment which then can properly you forward I to totally take agree yeah simple yeah. things simple things yeah simple. that's very cool now sean what do you wish you had known when you started when you started with a go high level Gosh, I don't know. That's, I mean, I, I mean, on one hand you could say, well, like, you know, I wish, I wish I had known how successful we were going to be and how great things were going to go. And, you know, that kind of thing. But I mean, a lot of life is the journey, not the destination. Right. And so, you know, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. It, happy. It, it is the way it was. And I don't know, how can you be who you are without the way, without the journey? So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I, I didn't, I don't need to know anything. I, I, I didn't already know. And if you knew how successful you'd be, who knows if you wouldn't become, um, you know, uh, complacent. I, I would agree with that. I mean, that's the whole idea. I mean, isn't it? Like if you knew, you know, if you, if, you know, if you knew, if you knew the future, right, you would just assume it was going to happen. But, you know, you got to realize that the way you get there is through a lot of effort, not just by standing around, right? Yeah, absolutely. And look, I mean, we're all humans. No one is perfect. What are you not, what are you not very good at, Sean? Most things. <laughs> Yeah, I pride myself. In fact, I pride myself on not being very good at most things. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, again, I, I know what I'm good at. You know, I know what I, I'm passionate about. And I know the things I really don't like at all. And I have very little qualms in my life about saying, yeah, sorry, not my deal or not for me. And I'm okay with that. I don't need to be well-rounded. I don't, you know, I don't need to be, uh, you know, again, middle of the road. I'm happy to be really good at one thing or two things and terrible at everything else. And I have very little, I have no apologies for that. Well, it's important to have clarity and you certainly do have that. So that's great. You know, I mean, because like you say, you can't be just learned I can't help it. That's the other thing for me. It's just, I've tried, it doesn't work out. I give up, you win, but you know, lucky for me, I found a couple of things I'm halfway good at. And so I'll stick to those. And, you know, lucky for me, those are things that I enjoy. 
and things that produce, you know, re reasonably good things in the world. And so you put that together and it's not a half bad thing. It's just, don't remember me, you know, don't, don't ask me to remember anything and do anything detailed or fill out a lot of forms or, you know, remember a lot of details. It's just not my deal. Would you say you're more left brain or right brain? Oh, I can't remember the difference. Like, are you more, are you more <laughs> like a, a technical type of introverted personality or more extroverted? Definitely more introverted, I would say, believe it or not. You know, I've always been into computers. I have ADHD, so it's a big part of who I am. And so it just means I live, there you go. See, I live in the moment. I'm really, I'm really good at that. And computers have always been great because you can kind of, you can hyper, hyper, hyper through them. And if they break, it's okay. You can just kind of like fix the code to run it again. But, you know, I can't, I can't deal with anything that takes really long, drawn out sort of sequences and remembering all that stuff. Just not, not my deal. Yeah. Now I've got a really tricky question. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> tell me Fire. some. So tell me something that's true that almost nobody agrees with you on. Oh gosh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know if they don't agree with me. I, I can't remember. <laughs> But you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of things that uh, that I think I think that there's lots of things where people there are common things in life where people just don't do the math. So like people will say things like, oh, I really want to buy this thing or go on this vacation or spend this money or take this risk. And I think if they sat down and just put out a spreadsheet and put down the likelihood that they were going to like that thing 10 minutes later, an hour later, a year later, I think the likelihood is close to zero. And so I will say in those moments, I I've been the one to sometimes say, hey, I'm not, I'm not sure that's very smart. I don't think you're going to really love that car as much as you think. And I don't think going to, de to debt over that is a wise idea. And so I would say that th those are the classic places where I see people just miscalculate. And I would say that, that in, in the heat of the moment, most people don't agree with me at all of those things. But, you know, I try, but a year later, I think most people are right back where they are. Because again, I think most people are seeking happiness in, in, in false, false idols, as it were. And, but I think that we're all human. I, I, I'm sure I do it too. I can't wait for my new Mac, but I'm pretty sure five minutes after I've got it, I will love it as much as I did the second I opened the box. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And obviously they disagree because you're challenging their beliefs, right? They're emotionally, emotionally excited about something. And now you're challenging it with rationalizing why it's probably not a good idea. So it's. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. And that's, and I think that's probably, you know, a very common, a common situation. And, you know, it, it, it's also about domain of expertise, right? I mean, you know, I, I challenge a lot of my product managers a lot of the time and I say, Hey, no, I don't think we need to make it that complicated or that good out of the gate. I think it could be a lot, be a lot skinnier and a lot less, less features. And I think it's way important to do that because I want to get it out yesterday, not, not next year. And, you know, I get a lot of flack for that, but you know, I, you know, here we are. <laughs> That's always a challenge. Perfection kills progress. You can always tweak it later but try not to be perfect from the get-go. That's that's number one thing I've, I've learned many times and over, and I still battle with it because, I mean, I'm perfectionist by nature, but I, I catch myself on it yeah, as I well. Yeah, I don't have so. that problem, so I'm good. <laughs> oh, well, I wish I, I was I wish I was like that, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I tried. It just never worked. So, you know, you just got to go with who you are. Sean, what would, you uh, what would your advice be for somebody looking to start a business? The best way to start is to begin. You know, I mean, Just recognize that the world is an imperfect place. Recognize, oh, and the other thing is also recognize there's a great deal of luck in things, by the way. So if anybody says that they got there out of great skill and that they're so smart, myself included, they're just lying to you. A lot mm. of times things fall into people's laps in ways that they just, either they, they themselves wouldn't be readily admit to or they themselves don't even quite understand or know. But but if anything, just begin, right? Like just, just, just iterate. And the, the more you iterate, the more, the faster you'll get to where you're going to go. And sure, look like, be smart about it and read books and listen to those smart people and yada, yada, yada. But honestly, just be consistent and, you know, kind of like the walk, get out there. You know, a long time ago, I, I, there's, I had a, I had a friend of mine, he was trying to help me learn how to like lift weights and be in the gym. I was really into it for a while. And I remember going in and on some days I'd be like, wow, that was a great workout. And then sometimes I'd like, oh, I feel terrible. And he said, you know, Hey, listen, don't, Don't worry about it. He's like, there are going to be crappy days in the gym where, you know, just showing up and doing the reps, even if you could lift half the way you could the last time and you're wondering what's wrong, it doesn't matter. Just do your best. And the fact that you're, you're showing up to do it, you are making progress. It's just sometimes you're going to make more progress than not, right? And sometimes you're actually going to get set back. But the fact that you show up is really what determines at the end of the day, whether you're going to win in the end. And I always remember that advice in life. 
because a lot of times that's exactly what happens. You show up and things do not go the way you want, but the fact that you're there, right, is progress. And the fact that you come back is progress. And that is what will determine the winners and the losers, I think, in, in the aggregate term. And if you can continue and pursue until infinite, then you just keep on strengthening your strengthening your raw oh, shit. I just forgot the word. Uh, well, persistence. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that if you look at if you look at persistence as a concept, I think that that is where success really lies. I think people think that there's like this really like straight line and there's like these perfect sp- st- steps and all this other stuff. That's total absolute nonsense. I think persistence and doggedness is the definition of what creates successful people, not knowledge, not pedigree, not background, not, not perfect answers, you know, even oftentimes not experience. I think ultimately it's, can you go out there realizing you're going to fail in many scenarios and take the hits and keep coming back? Because if you do, eventually there's, you know, you're going to be there when other people are not, and that's, what's going to create space for your success. I love it. I love it. Sean, what would be top three things for the lesson of this podcast you'd like to walk away with quote after listening today? You know, if you haven't started, start today, you know, realize the jury is brutal and hard. And even those of us who are quote unquote successful, get our butts kicked every single day, no matter what they say or what they want to admit. So don't, don't worry about trying to idolize anybody. In fact, I'd recommend that you don't. Um, and if you haven't seen Go High Level, go check it out. Sean, it was really awesome to have you on the show today. Do you have anything you'd like uh, to offer? You'd like oh. to offer our listeners to, to know about? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely check out the link in the show notes below. You're going to love it. It's it's great. So definitely click that and you'll definitely get a uh, really cool forward. You can come see our site, see everything that we're all about and check us out. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, coming along today. I know you're a busy guy, so uh, I much appreciate it. And sharing your journey with, with everybody on this podcast is is what's going to inspire others in one way, shape or form, whether it's to take up some working or, or think about, you know, signing up for your software. So I really appreciate you. And guys, thank you for listening to today's episode on the Success Inspired Podcast as well. Look, if you've enjoyed this interview, then please share it with your mates that you think would also benefit from listening. For show notes, links, and extra tips to help you accomplish more in life and realize your potential, please go to successinspiredpodcast.com. That's successinspiredpodcast.com. Thank you and have a great rest of your day, everybody.